Shalom. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Chakwarash. Dear ones to my teachers, the elder apostles of the great millstone, who rule well, and as always, peace and salutations to all the fellow laborers of the hopeful elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, we're in a year to turn up, and you see that uh, you know, the prophecies are popping off the page. Um, you know, especially uh, the things that Yahweh Shai said concerning the signs of his return. You know, he said that, you know, you will hear wars and rumors of wars. A uh, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And it seems that, you know, each year the Lord turns it up on all those different categories. All right, war, you know, pestilence. All right, uh, you know, extreme weather patterns, uh, you know, devastation, you know, earthquakes in diverse places. And, um, you know, they're only going to intensify, you know, until the Lord shows up. So right now, you know, we're in the midst of a, a manufactured crisis that's been ushered in by the globalist international bankers, the elite. And right now, because they want to push an agenda, you know, they have an objective to accomplish they want to make sure that the whole world is submission, you know, to those objectives, to their agenda. And one of the best ways is to, um, you know, take their food, take their, you know, freedom, you know, take their, um, you know, self-sovereignty and transfer, transfer all the power and the control and the wealth to themselves. And that's what's going on. And they, they managed to do that through this manufactured crisis, this so-called pandemic. So now we're starting to see the effects of the supply chain, you know, that's been uh, altered, you know, since the beginning of this whole uh, thing. You know, there was a uh, giving warning going back to uh, the first lockdown in 2020, where they said that it was gonna start to um, affect, uh, affect the supply chain. And uh, you had all those, um, you know, those uh, cargo ships stranded in the seas, and uh, they weren't allowed to, uh, you know, bring them, you know, to the docks, the loading docks. And uh, also, a lot of farmers were forced to um, dump their produce. So you, you're seeing scarcity within the markets. All right, you're seeing uh, empty shelves, which that's all in in in, in the scriptures. It tells you that, you know, store, storehouses will be uh, suddenly empty. Our fields shall be appear unsown and the storehouses shall appear empty. And that's what you're seeing in various uh, places in the country right now. This is all being, being manufactured. And these devils are starting to act like, you know, these uh, ridiculous policies and mandates is not the, the cause and and the reason why these uh supply these supply chains you know are are happening all right we know that these unrighteous decrees is responsible for these supply chain issues but they don't care all they care about is you know taking you know total control all right seizing the power over the people they want you to be the tail and they to be the head so anyway, let's uh I'm gonna listen to just maybe a few minutes of this. I'll let y'all listen, and then uh, we can definitely uh, hit hit some precepts. Well, something that we never expected has now arrived in the United States of America. Right now, the state of Washington is literally rationing food. And I predict this could spread across the U.S. Even the United Nations is warning of global starvation. But before I get into the report, just a quick break. A newly discovered software flaw is one of the most critical vulnerability right, let me, uh, fast forward. level websites. Security alarm saying everyone is at risk. Your privacy, it's in your hands. Help protect your online data. Me, and it's so easy to sign up. All you have to do, and then just select your. 
skip. You know, they got to advertise and shit. Let me skip to the point look at this tweet that was put out by the DC Homeland Security and Emergency Management. And it states this, if you're hitting the grocery store to prepare for winter weather, please just buy what you need and leave some for others. You may have noticed empty shelves in some stores due to national supply chain issues, but there is no need to buy more than you normally would. In other words, let's ration what we have in the grocery store because we have real problems with the supply chain and we're trying to warn the American people that things are going to potentially get worse. In fact, I like the way that this was retreated uh, or re. And just notice how they acting like it's just unfortunate that, you know, it, it ain't being manufactured. You know, they they make you believe that the supply chain is 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 uh, affected because of some type of uh, natural disaster or uh, you know a locust then came and ate up the crops. No, they the ones that halted it right, through these policies, these ridiculous policies. You know, they held, you know, those uh, merchant men, they held them hostage. You know, when they couldn't really bring in what they normally bring in. So this is how you know that this is a straight up manufactured uh, famine. And this is all to get the people to submit. All right. He tweeted by Raheem, who said this, rationing hits as whole DC. And I don't believe I disagree with him on that point. Not only that, but most of you have been paying attention to some of the grocery stores yourself. In fact, there's a hashtag that has gone viral on Twitter. That's hashtag empty shelves Biden, showing just how bad things really are with this Biden administration. And here's just some of the stuff uh, that you can see on Twitter with these empty shelves. Even my local grocery stores that I've been going to all are massively out of products uh, and even services. If you go to do stuff for your car, you're running short on supplies or certain things that you might need for your car or your washer or dryer or your appliances and the whole nine yards. Thanks to the Biden administration, this is now the stuff that we are dealing with. And this actually goes on and on and on. Uh, with Let me get a quick scripture. Your Biden is straight trash, man. But hey, he's just, you know, He's he's just a puppet, man. They they they're using this guy. He's the he's the crash dummy puppet for what the elites are doing. Let's get us a rock. Uh, was it ten? It's a rock ten. In uh, verse uh, three, it says, "An unwise king ruleth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited." You know. We know Biden, he's uh he's not all the way there. Okay. His brain functions only when it's convenient. And you know, one dude questioned him about the inflation and and then he just, <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw that, but uh somebody asked him about the inflation and he said something about you know, um inflation is an asset and then he said he said uh what a he said, what a dumb son of a bitch, you know? So, you know, this guy, he's just, you know, he, I mean, but he's the devil, though, you know? He thinks he's making progress in his own mind, but he's actually, <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's bringing, he's, he's crashing the country, man. He's, he's bringing the country down, all right, quick and fast. So, hey. Hey, good job, uh, Sleepy Joe. You you doing a you doing a, a wonderful work. All right, cause this place is uh, it's on its way out, man. There's no healing of thy bruise. All right, Babylon will not be healed, man. So uh, let's let's go back. States all across the country, but this burden is widely being felt uh, by Americans all across the state. And the truth of the matter is, things are not getting better; they are getting far worse. In fact, this was admitted by even the Wall Street Journal. Take a look at this article here. 
And they talk about some of the problems that we're having. And it says U.S. food supply is under pressure from plants to store to shelves. Weeks of workers calling in sick to continue supply and transportation disruptions, making store shelves harder to find. It goes on to state this. The food industry executives and analysts warn that the situation could persist for weeks or months, even as the current wave of COVID-19 infections ease. Recent virus-related absences among workers have added to continuing supply and transportation transportation disruptions, keeping some food scarce. Nearly two years ago, the COVID lockdowns drove a surge in grocery store buying that cleared the shelves of products such as meat, baking ingredients, and paper goods. Now, some executives say that supply challenges are worse than ever. The lack of workers leaves a broader range of products in short supply, food industry executives said, with availability sometimes changing daily. So as you can see, there is a real strain on our food supply on our products. And there's something that's about to make it a whole lot worse. And that is the fact of farmers having to deal with increased prices from fertilizer. Take a look at this article here. Also on the Wall Street Journal, it says farmers are failing as fertilizer prices drive up cost of food. And they go Yep. <clears throat> Inflation, man. And it's starting to become more scarce. So that's, you know, driving the prices up. Okay. And also, it tells you that in the Apocrypha that some of the crops would, you know, fail through blasting and they would be in, a, you know, the worst case. Second Ezra 15 and uh, 13, it says, They that till the ground, which are the farmers, shall mourn for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail and with fearful constellation. And that's through these, uh, you know, extreme weather patterns. You know, we've been dealing with tornadoes, snowstorms, you know, wildfires, all type of stuff. And that's all coming from the Heavenly Father. So that's also um, contributing to the food crisis that we're starting to experience. Where now we're starting to see the effects. Now the warning went out, you know, all throughout last year. And even in uh, the end of 2020, that was telling you. You know, these corporations were stockpiling food. And now you're starting to see those effects now. So pretty soon, you know, wherever, whatever market you go to, because there's a, a shortage, they're going to be telling you, you're going to have to, uh, you know, ration. You can only get this quantity or this amount of products. And it's going to be a healthy price. So you already know that's going to lead to unrest. That's why it says in the next verse, it says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh. One people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. Because now we're coming into the time of trouble, tribulation. Let me get a mark real quick. People are going to be in distress. You already see how everyone is doing financially. This whole crisis then took a toll on everybody financially, man. A lot of people were uh, evicted out of their homes once the mor moratoriums were over with. A lot of people lost work. A lot of people got laid off. A lot of people had to resign due to those mandates. This is uh, Mark 13 and 8. It says, for a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. You had one in Japan and you just had one in uh, Haiti. It says, and there shall be famines and troubles. All right, and this is the times that we're coming into, man. These are the beginnings of sorrows. All right, so going back, people are going to be experiencing those troubles. So there's going to be unrest. People are going to be out there, you know, rioting, snatching up shit. You already got Jake on the West Coast. They already doing that all right they, they they robbing whole uh freight trains okay they following uh women home out of the grocery store following them to their driveway and robbing them and taking their food and then pretty soon they're going to look towards you know their leaders these mayors these wicked ass you know, uh, puppeteer mayors and, and governors. 
that's only doing what the elite is telling them to do, especially these uh, Democratic ran uh, mayors and, and governors. They're they're tearing it, man. They turning their cities into straight shitholes, man. All right, and and uh, the mayor of D.C. He's the he's the one that made the tweet. Okay. That that motherfucker is the one that suggest that's suggesting that you know they, you know, buy their supplies, but make sure you buy just enough. You know, don't buy it more than you normally would. Leave some for others. So, yeah, man, we here, and it's gonna start. It's, it's gonna, you know, trickle through the rest of the, the cities and the various states. And it's starting to look like Venezuela up this this mug, man. All right. So anyway, um. Let's let's go back to our second edge of fifteen. And, and matter of fact, so like yeah, the the DC mayor, uh, I think her name is um uh, Muriel uh, Bowser or something like that. She you know who you know who she uh what she represents. She's representing that communism, man, because she's she's democratic. She supports uh, Soros. And they're the main pushers of this whole, you know, new world agenda. So you're really going to catch total hell in any city where you got these type of, uh, 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 you know, governors and leaders, you know, reigning. All right. So uh, anyway, let me read up verse 16 it says, for there shall be sedition among men and in invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the courts of their actions shall stand in their power. You know, people, you know, rising up and uh, you know, coming against their, you know, their 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 leaders, whether it be the mayor, whether it be the, the governors, these politicians, you know, with their oppressive uh mandates and policies that's putting more and more economic strain on on the on the you know the environment. It says a man shall desire to go into a city, shall not be able, because it's going to get so wild. They're going to, have to, you know, lock everything down. Like what's going on over there in um, what's that uh country in Africa? You know where they they attempted uh, a coup over there. All right, they saying that there's a um, there's a, a I think a curfew that they had to issue because the people ran wild, man. You know. So. We're in that time, man. You're gonna, you're gonna, have, you're gonna see uh, sedition. So continuing on, it says, "For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid." So it's gonna get real violent. A man shall have no no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods. You know, uh, you know, burglaries, robberies, home invasions. Because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right, and that's uh, that's where it's gonna get to. That's where it's gonna head. You know, once that uh, you know, once the food is down, well, that that's pretty much a wrap, man. All right, and I mentioned uh, Africa. I think the uh, uh the country is a uh, Burkina the the Burkina Faso. All right, there was a, a military coup that was attempted over there. And they had to lock everything, shut everything down. All right. So it's obviously there's some activity going on over there, but we're going to wait and we're going to look more into you know, that situation. All right. So anyway, let's go from there. And let's go to Ezekiel. And this was a prophecy that a siege was getting ready to happen to Jerusalem. And during a siege, you know, that's when... uh. The military, you know, put that that trench. You know, they they put that um that uh what they call it. Basically, a a, a blockade or a barricade to basically surround a city and 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 block and keep everything from coming in or anything leaving, and that causes a straight up famine. 
And you already got the truckers crying out. So, hey, in the next few months, man, it's, 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 it's going to get hot, man. So this is a Ezekiel 4. And I'm going to start at verse 9. And this was an instruction that the Lord gave to Ezekiel to prepare for the siege and a famine. And it hit Jake hard, man. This is, uh, let, me, let me read in the NLT translation. It is uh, Ezekiel 4. I'll, I'll start at verse 5 and I'm going to just read down. It says, I am requiring you to bear Israel's sin for 390 days, one day for each year of their sin. After that, turn over and lie on your right side for 40 days, one day for each year of Judah's sin. Meanwhile, keep staring at the siege of Jerusalem, lie there in your arm bared and prophesy her destruction. And, and we're prophesying uh, America's destruction. Right? It says, I will tie you up with ropes so you won't be able to turn from side to side until the days of your siege have been completed. Now go and get some wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and emer wheat and mix them together in a storage jar. Use them to make bread for yourself. During the 390 days, you will be lying on your side. So he, he got he to, gotta, you know, bear it before Israel actually goes through it. It says, ration this out to yourself, eight ounces of food for each day, and eat it at set times. So this is a food rationing. It says, did measure out a jar of water for each day. And drink it at set times. Prepare and eat this food as you would barely barley cakes. While all the people are watching, bake it over a fire using dried human dung as fuel and then eat the bread. Human shit. <laughs> then the Lord said, this is how Israel will eat defiled bread in the Gentile lands to which I will banish them. And the food we eat right now is, is totally defiled. All type of meats getting recalled because it's contaminated all type of bacterias and you know outbreaks you got pesticides on a lot of your of veg, you know vegetables and fruits a lot of uh genetically spliced you know uh fruits and and, and veggies this is all messed up we, that's why hey you know this this devil gotta go man it says, then I said, O sovereign Lord, must I be defiled by human, using human dung? For I have never been defiled before. For the time I was a child until now, I have never eaten any animal that died of sickness or was killed by other animals. I have never eaten any meat forbidden by the law. All right, the Lord said, you may bake your bread with cow dung instead of human dung. And he told me, son of man, I will make food very scarce in Jerusalem. It will be weighed out with great care and eaten fearfully. The water will be rationed out drop by drop, and the people will drink it with dismay. Lacking food and water, people will look at one another in terror, and they will waste away under their punishment. And in this case, you know, Jake is just going to start going out and uh, you know, robbing, robbing people. You know, people going to be killing each other and taking food from, you know, people's households. And then you got the preppers that's, you know, prepared for it. So they've been stocking, stocking up food, barrels of, you know, rice and beans and all that other stuff. You know, powdered uh, foods. And they also been getting uh, weapons and ammunition because they know people are going to be coming for them. This is what this is what part of Jacob's trouble looks like. All right. And let's go to our Leviticus 26 and 26. And this was a curse against Israel. 
Leviticus 26 and 26, I will destroy your food supply so that 10 women will need only one oven to bake bread for their families. They will ration your food by weight, and though you have food to eat, you will not be satisfied. So, hey, you know, when you got a food ration, that means that you're, you're coming into famine. Right? And now they're saying that, you know, food rationing is hitting Babylon. Uh, you had the, the food banks, you know, last year and the year before, people was lining up to get free food, and all of a sudden you stopped seeing that. So it's about to get real interesting, man. Year to turn up. So anyway, you know, I'm going to end off with that. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honesty. Al-Bashim, Al-Shai. Until the next lesson, Shalom.